there are so many ways that you could export from Lightroom. Some might be good, some might be bad for your photos. Let's dive into what I recommend. Hey, this is Scott Weinkiewicz, and today I want to show you my export workflow from Lightroom. But before I do that, I want to show you some of the different ways that you can export from Lightroom to save space for when you upload to your website or deliver to clients. And so I want to go through the various configurations that you could do, and then I'm going to show you my exact preferred export method so that you can do it as well. So let's go to the screen so you can take a look. So here we are, and I have, um, I have five different virtual copies of the same photo. And you can see I have the title as quality 100, and then I have quality 80, quality 60, then I have limit file size to 256, and then I have JPEG mini. Now, I'm gonna go one by one and export these, showing you exactly how I do the export so you can replicate this on your end. Now, if you wanna see the good, um, really good comparisons, then I recommend doing this with the same images. Just make virtual copies. Here we are, and I'm going to uh, go to File and Export. And then what I'm gonna do is, I have a bunch of presets here, so I'm gonna start here and just uh, reconfigure it. I'm gonna export at 1600 pixels at the widest. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, undo that. I'm gonna keep the file size, because this is quality 100. I'm gonna make the quality uh, leave it as 100, sharper for screen. I'm gonna take away the JPEG mini module in this one, and I'm gonna export it to the desktop, and that's it. Um, you know what, I might even just take away sharpen for screen just so that it's a true, uh, you know, pixel for pixel match of everything. Now, if you, are, if you are a pixel peeper, then you will appreciate diving in deep and zooming in in Photoshop and seeing the differences. But if you are not, and you just want to see a, a comparison overall, then this is still going to be a good video for you. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail as far as the pixel peeping, but I want you to see uh, that, that there is a quality difference between some and versus others. So, uh, so again, I have 1600 pixels at the longest length, 300 PPI is my output, quality is 100, it's going to sRGB JPEG, and that is it, it's going to go to my desktop. And I'm going to actually uh, put on renaming, and I'm going to rename it to the title, and that what that'll do is it'll make the uh, JPEG actually the file name quality 100, so that way we know exactly what was what setting. And I'm going to export that one. I'm going to move into the next image, and I'm going to go to the export. The next image is quality 80, so what I'm going to do is switch it to 80, and you'll see that renaming is now quality 80, and I'm going to export. And then go to the next one, which is quality 60. I'm going to do the same thing, change it to 60. You can see the file name is now quality 60. And I go to the next one and it's limit file size to 256. So instead we're gonna uh, bring them back to 100, limit file size to 256K. You can see the rena file renaming is limit file size 256. I'm gonna hit export. And the last thing I'm gonna do is go to the last one, export that, bring that, uh, uncheck the limit to go back to 100. And I'm gonna add in the JPEG mini module. So if I go back to the bottom, you'll see that JPEG mini module is now in there and I'm gonna export. Once that's done, I will show you the, the desktop folder and we will look at these photos. Okay, so here are the, uh, the, the photos and just looking at the thumbnails, you might see slight differences between them all. Some might look a little bit crunchier uh, than others, but we're gonna dive into each one so we can actually see them a little bit larger. Let's look a little bit larger like this. So here is, I'm gonna start with, this, with the, uh, we'll go, this way, we'll go reverse order. So here is quality 100. So you can see here, this will probably be the biggest file size. And we're gonna look at the file sizes as well. But you can see this is probably the biggest file size because it's quality 100, no compression, and it's just you know standard JPEG compression, that's about it. We go down to 80. You're not gonna see anything notable at 80 right now. On And I've, I'm, I'm on a high definition screen that I'm recording this. so you're not gonna see any, any notable differences at 80 quality. If you go down to 60, you're gonna start seeing a little bit of differences in the shadows. If I go back to 80 again, you can see and back to 60. Right around here, you'll see a slight shift in the shadows. Uh, so the shadow areas are starting to get a little bit crunchy, a little bit more noisy. Then we go down to 256, and you're seeing very, again, a slight shift over in the shadows, but not, nothing big here. And we go to JPEG Mini, and it all goes back up. Everything is nice and crisp and smooth. There's very little uh, added noise or crunchiness or pixelation at all. 
Now, if we go to the, let's go look at the file sizes. Starting at 100, you can see that it's uh, quality 100 is 1.1 megabytes. Quality 80 is 496 kilobytes. And then 229 kilobytes for quality 60. Now, that makes sense because we are reducing the quality. So we are losing a lot of data. Now, if I go to limit file size 256, you'll notice it is going to be less than 256. But you'll notice that the, fi the uh, file size actually is only 194. So it actually cut out even more data than the quality 60. Okay. Now, if we look at the JPEG mini, it's 319 kilobytes versus 1.1, which was the quality 100 and 496, which is the quality 80. Now the difference is that it's actually, as you can see, the JPEG mini file size wise is in between quality 60 and quality 80, but the actual image quality, it's gonna be similar or uh, almost precisely what's the quality 100. And the reason for this is the JPEG mini, uh, the algorithms are doing multiple things. One, it's only compressing and removing data that really does not need to be there or does not need to be uncompressed. It's, it's actually doing it per image. So um, the big thing is, that it will, instead of, instead of a blanket limit file size of 256, which is a blanket across all of your images, or quality 80, which is a blanket across all of your images, what it's actually going to do is it's actually going to look at each individual image during the export process and say, okay, this image can be compressed this much without reducing the actual photo quality. Now, this is the second important thing, is that JPEG Mini will stop compressing the moment the software, the algorithms think that the photo will be reduced in quality. And that is the exact reason why you can run a JPEG, a JPEG file that's 300 DPI ready for print and put it through JPEG mini and then print and not see a difference because it's actually stripping out things that just don't need to be in the file for space saving wise, but still leaving the actual image at printable, beautiful quality. So, uh, I prefer the JPEG mini structure. And I say that because I prefer having uh, optimal image quality with reduced file size. Okay, so again, instead of me going to uh, quality 80, which is probably better for, the web for a website, for example, uh, I can go to JPEG mini and go in between 60 and 80 of what the Lightroom setting would be. And to do that, all I'm doing is again, I'll show you one more time, is I'm going to file export, and I have my preferred image sizing for the long edge. I have the quality at 100, and then I just add the JPEG mini module. And that way Lightroom is not compressing more than just you know raw to JPEG conversion, and then it's letting JPEG mini do the actual compression. I also wanted to load these into Photoshop just so you can see, uh, as I zoom in, the differences between each of the photos. And I'm gonna zoom in each of these equally. Right now they're all at 100%. And to me right now, the colors and the brightness and everything are true to what actually, how I process it in Lightroom in the JPEG mini version. You're losing some of the highlights in, in the other versions um, and losing some detail otherwise in other places. Again, a little bit noisier in the other, in the other versions. The JPEG mini one is, has all the sharpness in the mouth right now, which is great. That's where I, all the details are in this chocolate mess on her mouth. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can start seeing at 200%. Let's see if I can match these up fairly close. So we can start seeing all the pixelation that comes in in each of the photos. All right. So this is again for the pixel peepers. I'm not really a pixel peeper personally, but it is really interesting to see these side by side. Um, and again, the colors look better in this one for me, which is the JPEG mini version. Um, you are gonna see some pixelation, of course, across the board, because either way you are compressing, but, uh, and these are smaller images at this point. There are only 1600 pixels. Um, if I was to output larger, you would see a difference. Look at the 60, look how pink this it got at 60. At 80, it's still got a little bit of pinkness going on. Um, it's closer with the 100 to the JPEG mini, which makes sense. It's still a little bit more pink uh, on the 100. And then it's kind of lost everything. It's all yellowed with the 256 version. So 
you can see there's a wide variation. The one that's truest to the original is the, J the JPEG Mini version. Um, and it's interesting that, that the, the 100 version uh, still changed a little bit. So it's, it's really interesting. So I, again, I recommend doing this with your own photos so you can do a, a really good test of your own photos to see the differences. Okay, so I wanna be, be able to give everybody these presets that I created called Export for Websites. And uh, I made these presets for a mini course that I have, but I wanna be able to make sure that everybody has an access to this. So I am making these 100% free. And you can see here that the 1600 pixel presets, if I go and um, just click on that, you'll see that it's limiting the file size to 256, it's a default. And it's resizing to 1600, outputting with a little bit of sharpening because it is compressing and it's gonna reduce some sharpening. So I wanna add that back. And then that's it. Uh, and then the 600 with uh, JPEG mini is doing the same thing. It's limiting the file size, but it's adding the JPEG mini. And then the 1600 with JPEG mini plus is not reducing the file size. It is actually keeping the quality at 100 and then just adding the JPEG mini module. And that is going to be uh, the same for all of these different presets that you see here from 1080 to 2048. It's all going to be the same thing and they're all going to export to the desktop. So if you are interested in those presets, you can go to my uh, to my website, scottwine.com slash store, and you're going to click on exports um, as the presets. And they are 100% free. I hope that you check them out and enjoy them. And I hope that you realize that you really, when you're going to print, it's important that you don't do compression that will hurt you. And if you are doing compression on your JPEGs, don't use it with the blanket export from either Lightroom or Photoshop. Do it through JPEG Mini. That's the only way that you can compress your JPEGs and know for sure, for 100% certainty, that you are not losing your image quality. And if you're going to your website, you wanna make sure your images are smaller, small enough to load fast on slow internet speed. When you're going to print, it's important that you don't do compression that will hurt you. And if you are doing compression on your JPEGs, don't use it with the blanket export from either Lightroom or Photoshop. Do it through JPEG Mini. That's the only way that you can compress your JPEGs and know for sure, for 100% certainty, that you are not losing your image quality. And if you're going to your website, you wanna make sure your images are smaller, small enough to load fast on slow internet speed. So if you're on a shared hosting platform, then I recommend using a smaller image size for your uploads. If you're on a fast managed hosting server um, for your WordPress website, I recommend going to a little bit larger. The most I would do for your website is 2048 pixels because that's optimized for an iPad screen. Uh, but either way, I would run those through JPEG mini before that setting that to your website. Uh, and if you, if you wanna play with the different configurations, I have all these presets here. You can just do them real quick and export to see the differences. Uh, and I hope that you see that the, the, the quality difference is as notable as I'm seeing them, especially when you're going to a website. So besides from just the image quality, I'm talking load times. I'm talking um, the combination of load times and image quality. Cause you, it, it's a, it's a well, there's that fine line of, okay, I can make the, web, the images load super fast by reducing the file size dramatically, but is that much savings going to benefit my business by showing my images at a lower quality as well? So think about it, try it, check out the presets, try it for yourself. Um, and, and thank you for watching. I hope that you walk away with a little bit uh, something new from this. Thank you.